to design a 8086 base system. So now we'll try to see, uh, we will try to see in this particular class how to interface input output devices. How to interface input output devices to 8086 uh, microprocessors. Uh, 8255 is known to be programmable peripheral interface. 8255 is known to be programmable peripheral interface. When you are trying to connect your input devices like keyboards and output devices like your displays, LEDs and uh, LCDs to 8086 for visualization purpose, you cannot connect your keyboards or LCDs or different motors directly to 8086 because the 8086 can draw current if it is an output device. If it is an output device, it can draw current from 8086 microprocessor pins and the pins can be getting damaged. And if it is an input device, then the current entering into the microprocessor pins may damage into may damage the pins. So we need an isolation between uh, isolation between 8086 processor and input output devices. Right. So this we try to take up in these particular classes. So today what we are going to discuss is how to interface 8086 base systems with input output devices. And for that we use 8255 is an uh, chip in between your microprocessor and input output devices. So now let us try to take the need for ports and what exactly the port is. So now let me go through the discussions and now Yeah. So now what we are trying to do is, this is, so this is what your 8086 processor, here you may have output devices, output devices or input devices. So the output devices can be of your LCDs or seven segment displays, right, for visualization purpose which we use. So input devices can be switches by which the processor takes input your systems, computer based systems, will take input. It can be of your pen drive kind of thing, or it can be of CD drive kind of thing. So these input devices, that means the from input which we can try to take, 
into the processor. Now, here you can control a motor direction. Here you can control a motor direction by using your microprocessor. How you define microprocessor? Microprocessor is a general purpose device which is used to perform arithmetic, logical and control applications. So, if you connect these devices directly to the microprocessor, then that can damage the pins of microprocessors. So here, the connection of I.O. devices to the microprocessor can be done by using ports. Right, ports. Then what do you mean by this port is? And what are the requirements of the ports? We will try to see what are the requirements of the ports. The moment I said port, what does it mean? Or why do we need ports? So here the port, here it is. It is not your uh, A port. So the spelling is same. C port. Right. So here the difference of this port is it is an uh, electrical port. And this electrical port can be of input port. It can be of input port or it can be a output port. So the port here which we are discussing is an electrical port which can be in, which can act like an input port or which can act like an output port. So the moment we say here, so the moment we say here, So here, 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 a port and port requirement. So now let me take a new page by which you can discuss. So here, so now the requirement, so we are discussing about the port and then uh, what exactly the port and all. So when we try to in interface input output devices, we have to do it that through ports. So then the ports is what we will try to see now. Here, so this is what your microprocessor system. And now let us, now let me take what are the requirements of a port. Now the moment we say it is a port, the requirement is it should have a runway of 2 kilometers. It should have, you know, the moment the plane comes, the passenger has to get down, so you should have a mechanism. Similarly, the moment we say electrical port, right, the moment we say it is an electrical port, what exactly it means is what we are trying to discuss now. So now, we are trying to discuss 
the requirements of a output port the moment we say output port what exactly should come to our mind so here you have output devices output devices so these output devices we are connecting through ports to the microprocessor so then what should be the requirement of a output port so here if you try to consider microprocessor is very fast device within a microsecond it can give the data but if you have an output devices like leds then data if you are getting our eye perception cannot see what exactly the data came so the data need to be so the data need to be held up to the output devices takes the data so then here we need a device which will holds the data until your output devices is ready and takes the data so then the first requirement of an output port is a latch so latch is a device by which you can use or it, it it stores the data until the next clock pulse changes so the first requirement is a latch the next one is you are sending the data to the output devices then this output devices should have an address so you are sending a data to a particular device so then the data should have an address so then the port should have a address decoder that means when the processor sends the data from microprocessor the address decoder will identify that particular port then we are using same thing for connecting input devices and output devices so we have to configure the port as a input port or output port so that input port output port we can configure that by using a control register a control a register so we can say the requirement of a the requirement of a output port is so we are trying to discuss the requirement of a output port is it should have a latch it should have an address decoder address decoder and it should have a control register a control register to configure it as a input port or output port so now we will try to take up what would be the requirement of input port so what would be the requirement of input port so here 
in microprocessor system we are connecting input devices using port pins so the data which we are sending to the microprocessor by a device should be done through port so then the current which flows from input devices can damage the pins of microprocessor so the first requirement is it should have a buffer which will isolate your input devices and the microprocessor which is considered to be high input impedance and low output impedance device so it can be acting like an isolation or buffering circuit in between input devices and microprocessors and the moment we say it is a input port it should have an address decoder address decoder and the moment we say this is an input device same pin we are using so it should have an control register so these are the requirements of input port so now port happens to us now whether that is a input port or output port right so now you can consider this as a port means it should have a latch it should have a buffer if it is an input port it should have an address decoder a address decoder and it should have a control resistor by which a control resistor by which we can configure them that as input port or output port so this is what a port means so when you are trying to interface input devices and output devices to a0 x6 base systems so then you are doing it through ports or port pins so intel design a 24 port pin ic call 8255 call 8255 so you can interface your io devices you can interface your input devices and you can interface your output devices now to this 8255 which is a programmable peripheral interface so what exactly now 8255 8255 should have buffers latches address decoder and control register and we will interface our input and output devices this through this 8255 so now if i try to show you a computer system which is based on 8086 if you consider which we call it as pcxt personal computer extended technology is a ibm structure if you try to take now here if you consider now if you consider here this is your 8086 processor or 8088 processor so this 8086 processor is connected to 
your input devices like a speaker or a cassette recorder at the time a keyboard or switches through 8255 so this is an io decoding logic through which your microprocessor can interact with your io devices is so this is what exactly 8255 so we need four pins so intel they designed this 8255 to interface out io devices to the microprocessors so now let us try to see so now let us try to see now let us try to see what exactly this port and port pins and try to discuss this port says so now peripheral interfacing can be done so what is it is so peripheral interfacing refers to the hardware and software techniques which relies to control the flow of data between microcomputer and its peripherals so actual data path may be serial or parallel so we have some, some different types of input output support devices to a 086 processor like 8155 and 8220 which is a graph on display controller so now we are discussing 8255 which is a peripheral ic for 8086 based system design so now interfacing with io devices the data transfer is synchronized using interfacing circuits called io ports so now we define ports so what is port So the data transfer is synchronized using interfacing circuits such as I/O ports, and one I/O port can be used for different devices. All I/O ports can share the same bus. So then the interface circuit may consist of data register, control register, and status register. From processor perspective, the terms I/O port and I/O devices are some used inter interchangeably. So I/O interfacing chip. So here A255 is nothing but I/O interfacing chip between your processor and I/O devices. This I/O ports are of three types: input-only pins, output-only pins, and quasi-bidirectional pins. So now, if you try to take input device, you can read from an input device. So then we can use a command. If it is not you are reading from a memory, then you can write move a l comma b s. If you can read from an input device, then we use a command in a l comma d x. So just now we have seen. Interfacing I/O I/O devices can be done through ports. That the port addresses is holded by DX register. When when I explain DX register, I explain this clearly. So the output devices or input devices addresses can be held by DX register. So I can use a command in in a L comma DX. Right, so content of DX. So now, if you try to see reading input pins, you have an address decoder, and uh, you have buffer which is connected to B zero. So this is how the connection is of one bit. And coming to the output devices. Now, if I write, if it is memory, then move command. 
But now if you want to write something into a port, then you have to use the instruction out. Out AL comma DX means the content of AL will be moved to DX where the DX is holding the output port address. So then this is what you do. This is what your address decoder module and you are doing that output data transfer through latch. Input data transfer is through buffer. Output data transfer is through latch. So the ICs are 244 and 373 is what you are taking care. So the output addressing mode can be done using in and out instructions. And you have fixed port and variable port addressing modes. And now you can do the method of interfacing IO devices. So this IO devices in the last class has been discussed. It can be done through memory mapped IO and IO, IO mapped IO. So IO mapped IO is what Intel uses. So IO mapped IO used as distinct IO devices. That means each device will have different address. Memory mapped IO used as memory locations. So your memory mapped IO look like this. Your memories and output ports can be given the same address. So separate IO and memory space and memory mapped IO is a hybrid. So what is the advantage of this memory mapped IO is you can use the same addresses. It is a single bus architecture, dual bus memory architecture. Okay, if you have, you know, this is what your, uh, you know, your memories and IOs can be treated as the same address. So now if you consider the advantages here, it is a single bus architecture, memory mapped IO. IO map, and now IO mapping, it is, there are main, two main methods to, used to interface IO devices to the microprocessor. IO mapped IO and IO, memory mapped IO and IO mapped IO. In IO mapped IO, specific instructions are used to transfer data between the microprocessor, accumulator and memory. But whereas in memory mapped IO, the instructions that uses access memory are also used to access the IO devices. This is the difference. So both techniques are used in different microprocessors. So we will briefly discuss these things. But Intel used IO mapped IO. So isolated map, this is uh, IO mapped IO if you can try to date. And then if you can differentiate, same instruction versus independent instruction. Memory mapped IO, that means you have same instruction can be used to data transfer between memory and IO. But whereas in IO mapped IO, independent instruction, you have different instructions for doing data transfer. Then in memory mapped IO, entire address bus can be used, but here part of the address bus can be used, address and data bus. Same control, like so. Here now, if you try to see memory map IO and IO map IO, this you can skip. So why do you think Intel chose IO map IO for 8086 family processors? So Intel, as we said, Intel uses. IO mapped IO for their 8086 based systems. The reason is to maximize the amount of memory available to the applications. So, memory, your IO cannot be considered as part of memory. So, then you have the flexibility of more amount of memory available. To maximize the number of IO devices that could be connected, this is also one reason. To reduce the interfacing complexity for multiple peripherals and you reduce the possibility of bus connection from external devices. So these are the reasons why Intel follows memory map IO. 
so now if you try to take the formats and then you can use in instruction so in al comma put means that will read the data in or write the content which is there accumulated to the port so if you want to read continuously from a port you can write in al comma 22 that means a port is having address of 22 that port input device content is moved into al now compare al comma 10 if it is not zero jump no zero then go back so until that a small application you can right so these are the some examples and you can have a bit input port or 16 bit input port pins 8086 has 16 bit port pin port uh, 16 bit port addresses the addresses for port pins that is input port or output port are 16 bit other can be 8 bit too so 8086 has the dx register of 16 bit size so to bar 16 you can connect 65000 plus io devices to your microprocessor so then the interface in like you know you are connecting one io device to microprocessor then you have to give address to that particular io device so that whenever the device requests to the microprocessor it can take data or it can give data so then the addresses can be of 8 bit or the addresses of input output devices can be of 16 bit so now if you try to consider so this is what that 245 ic 244 so then this is what the address decoding decoder technique can be used giving addresses so now i want to read data from this eight switches into the microprocessor so this can be done through right so these output so 244 pins can be connected to data bus of your microprocessor but it should be given a address right so now if you consider this 8 bit port address so then here you have a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 so a3 is 0 and these are all zero right when it is all zero then it is zero then only it is selected a7 is zero so zero 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 and zero and here you have this a0 a1 a2 can be of it is zero 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 then y0 is selected so y0 is selected means this output device can be enabled 245 can be enabled so then whatever is the data is there in this switch Whether they are one or zero can be read by the microprocessors. So now, if you consider the address here, A seven is one, rest all are zero. So the port address here, which you can give, is eight zero. This is eight bit port address. Okay, this is eight bit port address. So then the decoder output is enabled only when the control signals G one and G two are low, and then control signal G is high. So therefore, the address of this I/O device is 80. This is how you can design your port pins. This is there in your 8285. Then that is uh, we are using ready-made. So now, if you have an example, write an ARP to read the status of switch two if it is pressed or not. So then you can write. So the same example. The switches are connected to microprocessor. So this 244. So whether the second switch is pressed or is not is what you have to write. So then in L comma 80 and add L comma 02, you can do an analogical and operation and jump zero. Then you can go to the next. If not, you know you can be there. This is what a simple program you can use. So this is what the input code design is. What how do you do? Right, the address decoder. This is what address decoder design using 244. So the address here is 5F. You can check it out later. 
and so from creating a simple input device using eight switches and then giving 16 bit address now if you can consider this can be done through 74 ls245 that means how to design address decoder so then this is what your decoding logic so this is what your 245 these are the switches connected to your 8086 through buffer is so then you can write move dx comma the address here is f000 and in al comma dx so this is how you can design your input ports using buffer ic similarly creating an output device means here you have your processor 8086 or 8088 is connected to led and then the led addresses are given to ff 55 so then you can connect here at 74 ls373 latch and then you can say whatever the content in al to an address so this is the example which shows it is of 99 the port address here is 99 the content of the moment you write the instruction out al comma 99 the content of al will be written to this particular so this is a address decoder output code. so now you can create similar thing which is x equivalent of f00 the same example so then you can use here no no this is so you can use it here a uh, 373 and then the 373 ic can be connected to this particular logic so you can write move al comma 55 move dx comma f000 and the content of al can be moved to dl so this is how you design a single but uh ports like input ports or output ports so this can be 373 so 373 can be connected here data and then that can be connected to 373 enabling can be done by using this particular logic yes right so this is how yeah so this is how you can uh, uh design a single output port pin and then how do you do accessing by using 8086 processor and uh our 8088 processor is so is this is clear so to know what we have discussed is the output uh, io devices can be interfaced to the microprocessor through port pins so the moment we say port whether it is a output if it is a output port then the port should have a buffer input port it should have a buffer and then if the if it is a output port then it should have a latch and how do you do how do you do that answer when you are using io devices is what we have seen so that address of the devices we will store in dx register and we use in and out command for sending the data so this much design need to be done to a designer who designs a microprocessor based system so then what intel did is so we can take, try to take up this example interface and input port then using 74 ls245 to read the status of each switches and display the number of key pressed on a seven segment display and input port address should be 0088h and the output port address should be 000ah so this example you can try to do so then this example you can try to take up based on the discussion what we have done now so you can use any can design this by using a simple r logic you can use this by using simple r logic and you can design the same you know how we have done so combining of these two which we discussed now you should have a latch and then but your address decoding logic only will be different and then you can write a program based on this so three ways to perform ios so i while i o devices you can uh, uh, service by using polling interrupt method and dma method what is that and all is we will try to see and polling uses cpu 
to do everything. So DC weight and watts status bits. Feed data into control resistor one by at a time and then even go ahead. So now this is what need to be done. And uh, here now if you try to see how to do you know poly method and then uh, service your devices and uh, and show examples are there and then now if you try to see in IBM PC yeah so the typical I will post on a computer if you try to see that looks like this and then the port addresses given by IBM PC are this 000 to 001 f is a DMA access controller and 0020 to 003f is a programmable interrupt controller right and then system speaker so there are, these are the different IO addresses and you can understand the importance of address decoding logic for a electronics and communication engineer to design a system like this right and uh, so these are all IO port addresses used in your IBM computer so some these are the some basic ports on IBM PC right which we widely used peripheral interface and all now we can consider DMA and by our and all right so now keeping this in mind background so now the conclusion is you know we need port pins to interface your IO devices so that can be done through 8255. So now if you try to see, then Intel came up with an IC 8255. So this 8255 is a programmable peripheral interface IC. It has three port pins, port A, port B and port C. And port A has eight IO pins. Port B has eight IO pins. Port C has eight IO pins. So we have total 24 pins are there on the IC, which can like which can use like input ports and output ports. Same pin. You have 24 IO devices you can connect to the microprocessor using one eight two five five IC. So it is a 40 pin IC. In the 40 pin, 24 pins. Now port A pins are 8, port B pins are 8, port C pins are 8. And to transfer data from processor to the devices, the data can be carried is of 8 bit. So 32 plus 3 is a 24, 24 plus 8, 32 pins. And you have one pin CS bar, chip select, read bar, and write bar. Okay? For reading and writing the data. So now, if you try to see what exactly is there in this particular IC, that what we have up to now we discussed it is there you can find it out. So this 8255 has 8255 has 8255 has three ports, port A, port B. Port A, Port B, and Port C pins you can use it as in combination with. So you can divide this into two groups, Group A and Group B. So Group A you can use this Port A and Port C upper, and Group B, Port B and Port C lower. So you have total 24. So instead of here mentioning this port C, it is split into port C upper and port C lower. So you can combine port C lower and group B, port B, and we can call it as group B, 
and board A and board C upper as group A. And this is what the internal data was. And this D0 to D7 of this A255 for data transfer can be connected to D0 to D7 of your 8086 microprocessor. And here you have group A control and group B control. And this is what the hardware details of 8255. Here power supply finds plus 5 volts on ground. And you have read bar, write bar, and A0, A1, and chip select. If 8255 has to be selected, means your chip select should be low. And you can reset this by using reset pin. So this is what you can see here, reset pin A1, A0, ground, and chip selectors. Is it all right? So this is about the hardware details of 8255. Now this 8255 modes, if you try to see, see, we are connecting our microprocessor to I.O. devices through this 8255, which is independently designed 24 I.O. pins, I C, which is 8255. Now this 8255 can work in three modes. One is simple I.O. mode, and that means in mode zero, mode one and mode two. Mode zero means it is in a simple input output device. It means each port pin, if you configure 8255 in mode zero, means each pin you can use it as a simple input port or output port. Mode 1 is a strobed input port or output port. Mode 2 is a bidirectional port. At a time you can use a port pin for receiving the data or transferring the data. So now in this class, particularly we try to see mode 0 applications. So this is very important, the control work which you need to write for configuring 8255 into mode 0 or mode 1 or mode 2. So now if you consider this, this D7 pin, so this is what your 8255 so this 8255 has two, one register with it called control register. So that control register, this group A and group B control is what we are saying inside, you can find in a control register. By writing a word into control register, you can configure 8255 into any one of these three modes. Mode 0, mode 1 and mode 2. So now, if you consider the control over, if D7 pin, if it is 0, then it is BSR mode, this bit set reset mode. And if it is 1, then the mode is I.O. mode. That means if you want to use the port pins of 8255 as input ports and output ports, then the first requirement is this D7 pin should be 1. If it is 0, then each pin, that means you know, 8086 is a parallel device, you can send a byte or receive a byte for to your out output devices. Individual configuring each, you know, sending one bit of data is not possible. You cannot configure a single bit of A255 as whether it is one or zero, but that facility is provided using a mode called DSR mode. So A255 works in two modes, so there is simple IO mode, or BSR mode. 
using the sr mode some port pins of c four you can make it as zero or you can make it as one so that is bsr mode and uh, if d7 bit is one then you can configure that as simple io mode that is d7 pin now d6 and d5 pin are used so d5 d6 d5 d4 d3 these two pins these four pins are used for group a control so group a means what port a and port c upper so these pins you can use it as input port or output ports are in combination so if d6 and d5 they are 0 0 then the group a means port a and port c can be in mode 0 if that is 0 1 that is in mode 1 and 1 0 or 1 1 that will be in mode 2 what do you mean by that it is simple mode 0 or mode 1 or mode 2 So mode zero means simple I/O transfer. Mode one is stroked mode. We we'll try to see what they are exactly. So now this D six and D five, these pins are used for mode selection of port A and port C upper. So you can configure these ports into these modes by using D six and D five. And in this case. If they are so, if I want to use a simple data transfer mode, output devices or input devices, then I can simply go for mode zero. So mode zero means I can configure D six and D five as zero zero means that will be working in simple I/O mode, and then. if my input devices and output devices are connected to port a so then if i write one then that pin will be configured as input and if i write zero here on d4 pin that can be port a pins can be configured as output ports so eight pins of port a they can be configured as output ports by writing zero in it in d4 and can be configured as input port by writing one in it d4 and d3 is port c upper so if the port c pin pc4 to pc7 if it is zero then port c pin you can use it as output port if it is one you can use it as input port so d6 to d3 pins are about group a control and d2 is of group group b mode selection so this group b can be mode 0 and mode 1 mode 0 means simple io mode mode 1 means stroked io mode so then if i connect my inputs which is our lcd is here to 8 to 5 and just used to transfer the data then i will configure that as simple mode 0 mode and when it is mode 0 port b and port c can be configured as input or output by taking d1 bit and d0 bit so now if you consider d1 now if you consider d1 if d1 if it is 1 then that is input if it is 0 then that Port B entire eight bits I can use it as output, and D zero if it is zero then port C can be worked as output. So if I want to you configure the eight to five five, 
ports all ports as output ports in simple io configuration then i will be writing a80 is the command word d7 is 1 and these bits are 0 and these bits are 0 so the or if i want to configure all the ports of a b c pins as output port and then i can give a command word of 80 in the control register which configures all the port pins to the output ports this is what is okay up to now what we have discussed is this so now the port selection now can be done by using the chip select so 8255 has to be selected means chip select should be zero but 8255 has two other pins a0 and a1 if a0 and a1 they are zero zero then port a can be selected if they are zero one port b can be selected and if it is one zero then port c can be selected and 11 means control register is selected so that means to configure the port pins we need to write the control word in the control register and but the hardware connection has to be done this way if chip select is 1 and then a1 and a0 or don't care then a255 is not going to be selected now 8255 is connected to a microprocessor 8086 like this then here the read bar pin of the so this is how you can do the addressing and interfacing the read bar of the microprocessor is connected to the read bar of 8255 the write bar of the microprocessor is connected to write bar of your 8255 the reset pin of the microprocessor is connected to reset of this to reset the 8255 and here the a0 and a1 A0 and A1 are connected to A0 and A1 of the microprocessor, and this A2 to A15, 16 address lines, right? The 16 address lines because A255 can be given a 16 bit address because DX register is of 16 bit. So you can use a decoding logic like this and used to select your chip selectors and if a0 and a1 of your processor if it is 00 then port a 01 port b 10 port c and 11 control register so This is how you can decode. So to communicate with peripherals through A255, three steps are needed. Determine the addresses of port A, port B, and port C, and the control register. So the here, each so port A has an address, port B has an address, port C has an address. Because selection of port A or port B or port C or control register depends upon this A0 and A1. so each has a 16 bit address so the first step to communicate with the peripheral is determine the addresses of port b port a port b and port c and control register according to the chip select logic then write the control word in the control register how do you want selection is all right how do you configure that input port or output port that you can write a command word in your control register and write io instructions to communicate with the peripherals use input in command and output command 
to do data transfers. So this is what the mode selection is now, mode zero. So different modes of 8255. Here you have mode zero, mode one, mode two, and BSR mode. So mode zero is what clearly is what we try to see in these particular classes. So now, if you have find the control load, if port A has to be configured as input port, port B has to be configured as output port, and port C0 to port C3 as input port, and port C4, PC4 to PC7 fins up port C as an output port. So then, just now we have seen the control word. It is, it is in a simple word, I.O. mode. In simple I.O. mode, you can like port A is input. So here now you check it out. Here port A has to be input. Port A has to be input means D4 bit should be 1. D6, D5 should be 0, 0 because simple I.O. port. So D6, D5, 0, 0, D4 is 1, input. And port B as an output, so D1 should be 0, D2 should be 0 because this is mode 0. So port C upper and port C lower is input or output means you can use this for writing the command word. So then the command word for this example is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0001 91H. So 91H is the control word. It has to be written. Is it all right? So this is what the control word needs to be written into the control register. So now this is one example. Program the 8255 to get data from code B and send it to port A. In addition, data from PCL is sent out to the PC upper. The data from port C lower is sent to the port C upper. And use the port addresses 3000H to 3003H for the 8255 chip. This is a good example by which you can understand Interfacing of 8255 to connect, to connect your I.O. devices. So here the problem is you program 8255 to get the data from port B. That means port B you have to use it as an input port and you have to send the data to port A. So configure port A as output port. And again, what you need to do, the data from port C lower is sent out to the port C upper. Then, 8255 has A0 and A1, so you need to use different addresses. So, port A has an address, port B has an address, port C has a 16-bit address. Control resistor is an 16 bit address. So 3000, it can be given to port A and 3001, 3002, 3003. So these are the addresses you can give. But here this could be you know 8 bit processor is what you can consider. So now let us try to see the simple example is. So now this is your 8255 is connected to an input device through port B and output device is port A 
is connected. So write a program to send the data to read port B and send it to port A. So now if you try to see here, move dx comma, that means, so the logic if you try to understand here, this is what the control register address the first you can write and configuring port A output and port B input and port C input and port C output is 83 and this control register need to be so this control word need to be written into DS in the beginning so move DX comma the address of your control word which can be of 3003 here and write the control word into the accumulator then out al comma ds means this three this piece of program will configure your 8255 into port A output and port B input. And next step is reading from port B. So port B address you can try to take it as so this you can take it as port A address. Then you can try to take it as port B address. You can try to take it as port C address. You can try to take it as port. This is what control register address. Okay. So now here if you try to see so now here see first you have to write your algorithm so here 8086 is connected to a input device so in, so this is what input device here is what output device so output device is connected to port a input device is connected to port c read this into micro processor and then write into port a this is the task so the first algorithm should come into mind step number one configure the control register configure the control register using a command word as port a output port b input and then the port c is then next one is read port B and copy the data into accumulator and then write the data to port A. So this is a simple four steps, you know, is what we need to do. Right? So now, this is, this algorithm should come in terms of steps. Now here you try to see so here you need to see 
the same steps so this is what the configuration step number 1 step number 1 so now reading port b can be done by using this instruction move the address of the port b in the dx and in al comma dx will read the port b then step number 3 is what moving this to port a so this is 8255c that means this is port a address so writing this into port a out dx comma al then the second part of the task is what use port at in addition data from pcl is sent to pcu the lower part of port c is connected to input port the upper part of port c is connected to output port so now this also has to be taken care but port c address is what 3002 So now take this address, move in AL comma DX. So in AL comma DX means you are reading from port C and and AL comma zero F. That means only lower part. So when I do the logical and with this, the higher the higher level will become zero. So that I have only the lower neighbor which I read from port C lower. So then do 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 logical rotation. R O L L gamma one. 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 That means. What I copied from port C lower with four logical rotations, it will move into the upper level, and now send it to port C by using a command out dx comma al. So the moment you use out dx comma al. Out dx comma l, then the content of al the higher byte will go to port c upper. So this is a simple example by which in which we are writing in terms of a algorithm, and that algorithm is converted. into instructions to do this particular task is is it all right so this is one example how we do a simple io data transfer by using 8255 to is it all right and now and now you consider this example a 8255 is shown in figure configured as follows port a as input port b as output and all bits of port c as output so find the port addresses assigned to a b and c and control register find the control byte for this configuration and program the ports input data from port a and send it to port b and port c this is one simple example <coughs> so now this example if you consider The D0 to D7 of the processor is connected to D0 to D7 of A255. 
so this is a to phi pi so then you have here you have the addresses i0 by i0 r and i0 w bar i o right and i o read you can generate the signals by using i0 by m bar read bar i0 by m bar write bar by using simple logical r for doing i o operations i0 should be 1 read bar should be 0 and if these two if you give it to a r gate that will generate i0 r bar and a0 and a1 are connected to a0 a1 na microprocessor so now here if you consider this is simple or gate kind of thing you can consider so this chip select should be zero so this chip select should be zero means it is zero it is zero it is one it is zero it is zero no it is one and it is zero so the address here is what you can find it out so here if you consider this a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a6 a7 Now, accordingly, how we have written, like whether it is zero zero, a zero a one can be zero 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 one one zero one one. Zero zero means four a. Zero one means four b. One zero means four c. And one one can be four control word. So now, if you try to write this here, here. Zero zero can be given to port A, and zero one can be given to port B. Here you can take it as A two, A three, A four, and A seven. So A two, A three, and then this is A four. and then this is a5 and a6 so for this the address decoding is see here a20 a30 a4 is 1 and a50 a61 right this is what and a0 a1 if it is 0 0 means port a 0 1 Zero zero means port A. Zero one is port B. One zero is port C, and then so then the port addresses here happens to be for this is fifty, fifty one, fifty two, fifty three. This is the first part of the question. Find the port addresses assigned to A, B, C, and control register. And part B. Find the control byte for this configuration. So, what is the configuration? Both port B, port A is input port, port B and port C are output ports. So, then the control word for this is 90. So, 90 means the first D seventh bit is one. And it is simple more zero group A is more zero application, and port A is input, and all other ports like you know this is group B, so all are output only. So then next one is zero, next one is zero, next one is zero. So it is nine, and it is zero. So you can have D seven to D seven D zero of eight to five five in mind. 
and then to configure this this is what the control register now you can use simple steps read port a move al comma 90 out al comma 53 so this is for 8085 example so this control code you can write it to 53 but 8086 when you use you are having 16 bit so that has to be done through ts so that can be you know can be changed no issues in al comma 50 Then out AL comma fifty one right into port B. So you are writing into port B. You are writing into port C. Okay. So this is what a simple steps for writing this. So this is one more example. Find the port address for the given figure. And find the control word and PA is output, PB is input, PC zero, PC three input, and PC seven, PC four output. Yes, you can you can do it. This is a similar example, right? So this control words you can easily find it out. So this is what the example is. So more zero application. This we can discuss in the next class. Like how to you know you how to do a simple seven segment display. Interfacing to your eight to five five. So if you have one two three four five six seven eight seven segment displays, and you can display here, you know, rolling display kind of thing applications also you can implement by using this, right? So how to you do this particular application is what you know simple examples. You know, when you use eight to five five to interface seven segment displays or LCDs or special uh, motor. in the next class so what we have discussed today's class in today's class is we have seen like what is the requirement of port what is the requirement of port so this can be so this can be done using 8255 So then, eight two five five. How to interface to eight zero eight six is what we have seen by seeing it's in the hardware. Like here, you have three ports: port A, port B, and port C. And these ports can be combined into group A and group B. And group A and group B control can be done by using a control board writing into the control register. So you have A zero and A one of eight two five five. So this A zero and A one. They are zero zero port A is selected, zero one port B, one zero port C, and one one control board. And then address decoding logic, you know, if any connection is given to you, how to write the con the connection logic is what we have seen. And uh, how to configure your command board is what we have seen in this particular class. So in the next class, we see few applications how to implement. Eight two five five for uh, doing a real time application. Yes.